Here is a momentum physics problem for you. I made this one up, so I have, I have the text right here. I made it up. I'll include the text down below. I'm going to read it to you because I thought it was pretty good. What? I can't even see it. Okay. In an episode of Mythbusters, this is true, a rocket engines were attached to a car. They wanted to do a rocket launch car. Uh, and it had a total mass of 3,200 kilograms. I may have just estimated that. I'm not really sure. So after firing the rockets, the car is moving at a speed of 32 meters per second. Seems reasonable. And it hit a ramp. They wanted to launch to see how far this car would go. It, it blew up, but that's not the point. Well, no, they, they, they did get something to happen. But anyway, it hit this ramp at 22 degree angle. And if we can assume that it's still going the same speed, just at a different angle, and that this change in motion took 0.1 seconds, then what's the force on the car? What's the average force on the car? So here's the car and it hits the ramp. And we have, you can think of this two ways. You can say, well, okay, it's changing velocity, so it has to have an acceleration. But it's easier just to use the momentum principle. So the momentum principle says F net is the change in momentum. Where momentum is a vector, mass times velocity. Now, in this case, what forces are on the car during this change of momentum, going from a velocity that way to that way, it did change directions. Well, we can assume, um, if you ignored the gravitational force, I wouldn't be upset, but I'm gonna put it in there. So here's my car. I have the downward gravitational force. And in order to get a change in velocity in this direction, the ramp's gonna exert a force that way. And it technically is a normal force. So that's my net force. Okay. Um, but I, I don't, I'm just gonna find the net force. I actually don't need the normal force. I want the net force. Okay. So the net force just depends on the change in momentum. So let's find the change in momentum of this. To do that, we need P1 and we need P2. I'm gonna call this the X direction and that the Y direction. So P1 is pretty easy. P1 is gonna be the mass times V1 X hat, right? In the X direction, so that's 32 meters per second. So this is gonna be equal to 3200 times 32. And we'll calculate that a little bit. Now, what about P2? P2 is also 32 meters per second, but it's at an angle. So I can write P2 as the following vector. It's going to be, its X component is right here. Its Y component is right there. So this is the adjacent side of that right triangle. So cosine of 22 is going to give me this side. Multiply it by the magnitude, the hypotenuse, and I can get the X velocity. So the X velocity is going to be equal to, let me write it out as M. I'm just going to write this as V cosine theta x hat. And then the y direction right here is the opposite side. So we're going to use sine plus mv sine theta y hat. So now I have a, a vector there. Let's go ahead and put in my numbers. Um, I, I'm not going to factor it off. So let's say 3200 times 32 times cosine of 22 x hat plus 3200 32 sine of 22 y hat. Now that I have P1 and P2 as a vector, I can find delta P. So that's what I want to find next. Delta P, delta P is P2 minus P1. So it's the change in momentum. Let me write these two as numbers, and then we can say P2, to do a subtraction, I'm just going to take the X component of P2 minus X component of P1. Y component of P2 minus Y component of P1, which is zero. Okay, so let's get these as numbers because it'll, be, it'll look prettier, and I'll put them up here. So P1 calculator time. Drop. Okay, 3,200, 32 times. And I get 102400x hat. Now, for P2, it's actually that same MV. I have that same thing. I just need to multiply it by the cosine of 22. So 22 cosine times. And the y component is, I mean, the x component is equal to 94943x hat plus, now I have to do the y component, 
102400 enter 22 sine times. And I get 38359 y hat. Okay, so now we can do this subtraction because this is plus zero. So I'm going to say P2 minus P1. So I can take this minus that, and that's going to be my x component for P delta P. So I have, no, don't. Let's just start over. Okay, 102400 zero, zero, enter, 94943 four, minus, I get 7457x hat. And then in the y direction, my final y is that minus zero, so it's just going to be plus 38359y hat. And that's in kilogram meters per second. Now to find the force, the F net, I'm just going to take delta P, and I'm going to divide by delta T of 0.01. So dividing by 0.1, I can just multiply both all of these by 10. So that's not too hard. It's going to be, I'm going to write it as a scientific notation now. 7.46 times 10 to the fourth x hat plus 3.84 one, two, three, four times 10 to the fifth y hat. And that is in Newtons. So that's my force. Now, I wrote the problem, I said find the magnitude. So let's find the magnitude of that just to get an idea about the total force. So I can just take this square plus that square, square rooted. Square root of the name, 7.46 times 10 to the fourth, enter squared. And then 3.84 times 10 to the fifth squared plus square root. And I get a very large force, 3.9 times 10 to the 2, 4, 5. Now let's just make a comparison. If I have a 3,200 kilogram car, 3,200 times 9.8. So the weight of the car is three times 10 to the fourth, right? Something like that, yeah. So this is 10 times greater than the weight. And what actually happened, if you watch the episode, what happened was that they had this car, it was going so fast when it hit the ramp, the ramp broke. Because the ramp wasn't able to apply that large of a force on the car uh, to change its momentum. Rocket cars, it's a fun problem. Momentum is a vector, don't forget that.